hear, listen to the word of God as we'll be reading it together. And uh, just trust you'll be blessed. And we're going to take a moment to pray in view of that. Father, we just take a moment at the beginning of our session this evening, recognizing that we'll be handling the word of God. And we'd want to do that carefully, reverently, faithfully, and tenderly. And we pray, Father, that as we read its truths and are reminded of the gracious pursuit of our God, of each one of us in our lives, that there will be people who perhaps up until this evening have resisted God or haven't even recognized that it's him that's been calling, that will submit and receive the Lord Jesus, even this night, this night as their own savior. Even as we might receive a guest at the door, it's that personal that individuals are responsible for how they respond, each of us, how we respond to the Lord Jesus himself. Though we can't reach out and touch him or look into his eyes, but by the eye of faith and through the power of the word of God, we can recognize that he is really calling us and we're responsible to him. And so we pray that as uh, we read the scriptures tonight and speak from it, that thou wilt direct our thoughts, both as we speak and each one who listens, and may we hear the voice of God in our hearts and minds. And we pray with thankfulness for the Lord Jesus Christ in his name. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to read a couple of verses of a song. And it, it kind of, it does summarize the things that uh, I feel are the focus of my message and are on my heart tonight. And it reads like this. There's a voice that is calling to thee. And it pleads with its, with its tenderest tone. And that's God's voice. While it bids thee from God's wrath to flee. And it whispers to Jesus now come. There's a savior now waiting for thee. With his heart and his arms open wide. Will you come? See, it requires a personal response. Will you come and from judgment be free? Through the lamb who on Calvary died? That's how much he wants you to come. That's how much he welcomes you. Because to be able to welcome you and me as sinners who in ourselves are unacceptable to God. He had to, and he willingly died. He gave his life to redeem us, to set us free from sin, and to truly wholeheartedly welcome us into his presence and into relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to be reading tonight in the Gospel of Luke, and there's three different references there, but they're very close, and we're going to read first in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13. Luke, chapter 13, and verse number 6. He also spoke this parable. Jesus spoke a parable as he's speaking to people. Uh, an illustration that they would understand. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, in his vineyard. It was his. And he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of the vineyard, look, for, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and I find none. Cut it down why does it use up the ground? Why is it occupying space when it does not yield what it was planted to yield? Fruit, figs. But he, 
answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well. But if not, after that, you can cut it down. This year, I want to speak to you for just a few moments about this year of extended opportunity. Now, it's a back a page in my Bible, and it's in Luke chapter 12 that I'm going to read. And I'm just going to read verses 19 and 20. This is a, another story, a parable of a, of a certain rich man. And he's, he has been very, very prosperous. And in verse 19, because of his prosperity, he says, I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool. This night, this very night, in spite of all of your plans, this night your soul will be required from you. Then whose will those things be that you have possessed? Much goods, many years, take it easy. Oh, you say, I'd like to be him. But God said, this night. Your soul, the one who gave life, requires it. Then what, about, what all about the stuff? You leave it. Who cares about the stuff? When this night you go to meet God. There's a happier scene in Luke chapter 19, and I'm just going to read that very quickly. Not the whole story again, but just enough. Uh, to give us a point of reference. Luke chapter 19 is the story of a man, Zacchaeus, who Jesus pursued, was passing that way, just like he's passing your way today, and he's pursuing you. You may think you're insignificant. God is pursuing you. It's not happenstance that you are listening to this message from God's word tonight. And it wasn't happenstance that Jesus was passing the way Zacchaeus was. Verse number nine in Luke chapter 19. And Jesus said to him, to Zacchaeus, today, today salvation has come to this house. This very day. Because he also is a son of Abraham. That means like Abraham acted in faith, this man Zacchaeus acted in faith. He's a son of Abraham. He has that characteristic. I wonder if there's somebody on this session today that's going to be a son of Abraham in that sense. Responding to God in faith. He's also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. This year, extended opportunity. This night, ended opportunity. This day, this very day in Zacchaeus' life, embraced opportunity. He wasn't gonna let it pass. He recognized the Savior, and he says, I'm going to receive him joyfully and make him mine. Claim him by faith. Do you realize that this very day, this ninth day of November 2020, you could know your sins forgiven and receive joyfully the Lord Jesus Christ personally as your Savior. This year. 2020. It's been quite a year. It seems like we had just started out 
2020 with its great possibilities, things were going well. January, February, perhaps you remember, maybe it wasn't going so well in your life, but for many it was financial prosperity, job prosperity, job security, things going well until suddenly, yes, now 2020 is known as the coronavirus year, pandemic. It's changed life. How many of us were on Zoom before 2020 or on Facebook to view sessions like this? 2020 has changed. But maybe it's changed more personally for you in the sense of that it's been a year of illness, personal illness, or of tragedy near to death. Maybe someone near to you that has, that has been taken away. You see, this year is a year of extended opportunity. This tree that was in the vineyard was the possession of the owner of the vineyard. And he had one who tended it, seeking fruit on it and responsible to bring the fruit to the owner of the vineyard. Do you understand? that in picture, this represents us. Each one of us have been given life for a purpose by God. We're all different. But God is seeking fruit in our lives. For one, the fruit of repentance. John the Baptist, when he was preaching the message of repentance and that the kingdom of God was near, Prepare your hearts to receive the king. He's near. He said, bring forth fruits unto repentance. Don't just with your mouth say one thing and keep doing the other, but actually have a turn in your life to come in repentance, recognition of your sin, and be prepared to receive the Savior when he's identified. Has there been in your life that fruitfulness toward God? Just an agreement with God recognizing that as God has diagnosed our condition, I agree with him and I recognize that it's serious. My sins are not just the same. Uh, just because we're all sinners doesn't make it some casual thing. But I personally am a sinner before God, and I'm going to meet God. He requires that I meet him, and I will not be accepted if I meet him in my sins. You see, fruit is, is expected from us. That's our purpose, to bring glory to God by being obedient to the one who made us, gives us, continually gives us life day by day. And it's required. And fruitfulness is, is promoted too. You see, there was the caretaker of this vineyard. And he said, look, let's just give it another year. Let's extend the opportunity. This tree has grown for some time. And if, if, if I just dig around it, loosen up the soil, if I put some fertilizer around the trunk of the tree and in the range of its roots, perhaps there'll be fruitfulness next year. You understand that God wants and is promoting fruitfulness. I mentioned things that are disruptive in life, in our lives. And maybe you think you've just been unluck unlucky or you think tragedy always happens to you, but actually, it's God speaking to you. He's breaking up the soil. He's perhaps even now, as you listen, you're on a bed of sickness, and you're viewing life differently than you ever had before. 
you realize that the possibility of eternity is very, very near. And you're searching about your foundation and saying, is it well with my soul? When I leave this life, am I sure? Do I have a foundation that is sure, not based on my thoughts or my doing, but a foundation that is acceptable to God, that I will be accepted when I move from my current residence to my forever address? You see, God is promoting He's stirring the soil. He's fertilizing. He's wanting you to come to repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. This year, God graciously extends opportunity and promotes the opportunity of fruitfulness. Perhaps there are some young people listening in, and if you had your choice, you wouldn't. But your parents insist that you listen to this message and you listen to God. Maybe you don't appreciate that now, but they are instruments of God's love that are promoting the pursuit of fruitfulness in your life. They're praying that it not will only be this year that there's fruitfulness, that it'll be this very day. Because Jesus is pursuing you. He wants you to be with him. He wants you to be rescued from the wages of your sin and bring you into an abundant, rich life now in this life. And it really, truly is. I have experienced and lived the reality of a, of a joyful relationship with God for over 50 years, and I highly recommend it. I wouldn't trade places with anyone, the most wealthy, prosperous of people who have pursued everything in this life and achieved it, because I've got a, 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 a wealth a wealth of relationship, a wealth of inheritance that is in Christ that will never pass away. That's in contrast to the next man that we read. We read about a man who, who lived to pursue and he was successful in the life of, of, of prosperity, of wealth. And there is nothing wrong with prosperity and wealth. There may be some in our session today listening in, and God has blessed you with, with wealth. All of us, in relation to many around the world, would fall into the class of wealthy. We've got freezers that have a storehouse. Probably we could live on it for numbers number of weeks you've got a moose in the freezer or you've got provisions from the store that you've stored away and yes we're wealthy but this man's heart was set on it that's what he lived for when he drove into town on his chariot people looked at him with honor and thought oh i'd like to be his friend I wish I was like him, so prosperous. He's got it all. And he did have it all for now. In fact, he was so prosperous. And his crops yielded so greatly that his plans as he went to the lumber store, he said, look, I need a whole new building. I've got to tear down the old ones. This year's crop will not fit in the old ones, but I'll build the biggest ones that we can, and I will have it made for the rest of my life. And he was right. He just didn't know how little life he had left. Maybe your heart is set on all of the things that you think will bring you security, 
that you think will bring you happiness. Eat, drink, and be merry. Much goods for many years. How long are you going to live? Now, really, how long do you think you're going to live? Well, you uh, probably at least till I'm in my 80s or maybe even 90. I take care of my body and I exercise and I eat. And, but what then? Yes. Even if we live a long life, and I have an uncle that lived to be 107 years old, and, and he was healthy through almost all of those 107 years, but he died. He didn't take any of his possessions apart from eternal life, and he had that. What is your heart set on? Going to university to achieve that big job that's going to provide abundance. Or you're a young person and, and, and you picture moving far from home and you see that just huge house with pool in the backyard and all of the finest things of life to bring you comfort and people will want to be around you. But for how long? You see, but God. But God said, fool, this night, this night your soul is required from you. You understand, you do not belong to yourself. Every breath that we breathe is dispensed by the giver of life, the one who designed us in our mother's womb, the one who has cared for you, given you intelligence, a will, and emotions to love and respond to God. He's giving you this day. He's given you your life. He's promoting. He's brought you the gospel again. Right into your home. You haven't even had to leave to go anywhere to hear it. But just where you are. God is reminding you. You have this life to prepare to meet God. You will meet God. And in this man's case, this night, he was going to leave it all and meet God. The things he loved utmost in his life, he left. Now, there may be some of you tonight that is, as you are weighing in the balance what you're going to do with Jesus, it may not just be your business and your pursuits that are preeminent in your mind. It, it just may be your life of status quo. I don't want God to interrupt my life. Things would change, and I don't want things to change. I'm happy the way it is. I'm happy with my family. I'm happy with my friends. I'm happy with my lifestyle. But that's all going to change when God says, this night your soul will be required. Then you'll have no choice. You will leave it. You'll leave everything. You will go out to meet God one person at a time. You'll go out knowing it is well with my soul. Because my sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but all of it 
has been nailed to his cross, to Jesus' cross. And I bear them no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. But you understand? You need to come to the point this day that you embrace the Savior, that you recognize how passing the wealth and parties and friends and even family in some of your cases because you don't have other people around you that are urging you to come to the Savior. It's just between you and God, though we've been praying for you as well. This could be the day. Jesus, as we read about in Luke chapter 19, came and passed through Jericho. He'd been there before. Perhaps many times he had been in Jericho. Zacchaeus had heard about him. Zacchaeus had heard about the amazing things that Jesus did. Jesus, or Zacchaeus had heard that Jesus receives sinners and eats with them. And he realized that in spite of me being a dreadful, deceitful sinner, he will receive me. And because of what Zacchaeus heard, as Jesus was passing that way, and though Zacchaeus didn't know it, it was the last time that Jesus passed through Jericho. Zacchaeus had a repentant spirit. All his sins, his lifestyle of deceiving and deception and lying had brought him riches. It had also brought him guilt because he recognized that I'm accountable to God. I'm going to meet God. This life is not the end of it all. There's going to be a this night in my experience when I leave this life. But now I've got today. And Zacchaeus, as he sees his opportunity, Jesus is passing by. He is repentant. He's, he's lost his pride. He's so urgent. He's so urgent to get to Jesus that this proud businessman, tax collector, ran ahead of the crowd. He wasn't going to let the obstacles of a crowd around Jesus. He wasn't going to let the obstacle of his own shortfall he was short of stature. He couldn't see over the people. And so he runs ahead and like a child, he climbs, he climbs a tree. Maybe, maybe people, we don't read about it, but maybe some people made fun of him. Zacchaeus, what's up? Climbing a tree and in your clothes? What are you doing? And maybe people if they knew you were on this call listening to the word of God, would make fun of you. It's not popular to listen to God. Not in today's world. You'd be despised. But when a person understands their guilt before God, when a person understands that this is a passing opportunity, Jesus is passing my way today, and it may very soon be my night of departure. And it is my year of extended opportunity. I don't care what anybody thinks. I need to meet Jesus. I need to have my sins forgiven. And as he was up that tree, before Jesus ever arrived at that spot, his eye, was on the, uh, his eye was on Zacchaeus. Listen, 
The eye of God is on you today. We don't know many of you. And many of you that are on Facebook, we don't even know that you're watching. But God has his eye on you and he's seeking you. We read it in verse number 10 of Luke chapter 19. The son of man is come to seek and save that which is lost. You say, how? Listen, he went to the extent of death. He went to the extent of not climbing a tree, but being nailed to a tree with you on his mind, with your sins, with my sins placed on his account and the outpouring of the judgment of God. That's how much he was seeking you. And he paid in full your penalty for sin before a holy God. He came to seek and save the lost. The lost are those that recognize, I can't do it. I'm helpless. God recognizes us. Every one of us is lost. If it was a self-save opportunity, he would never have had to go to that extent. He would never have had to pay that price. But the lost are helpless. That's where we are. And he is so determined. The God of heaven is so determined that you not remain lost. That he's come seeking you. To save you. This day. And as Jesus came to the bottom of that tree. He looked up. And he called Zacchaeus by name. Listen, he knows your name. And he's calling you to tonight or whatever time of day it is as you listen to this message. The God of heaven is seeking you and he's calling you by name and he's called you, some of you, often. But today, he's calling you. Today, I must abide at your house. Listen, you have an opportunity. This very day, this very day, this ninth day of November 2020 could be the ultimate change in your life. Zacchaeus' life was changed. No, he didn't have to tear down barns and build greater. In fact, his life was so changed that he recognized that much of the wealth he had received was sinful. And he said, I'm going to restore the things I've taken illegally. I'm going to give it back. Listen, genuine repentance toward God produces a change in my attitude toward my sin. And my attitude toward God is changed. My attitude toward people is changed. My attitude toward possessions is changed. Zacchaeus was a changed man, and you'll be a changed man or woman or boy or girl when you come to embrace the Savior and recognize that your sins caused his death. He has loved you so much that he willingly gave his life. In John chapter 10, we read these wonderful words. I am the good shepherd. Here's another picture. The good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. He gave his life for you. Will you receive him? Zacchaeus came down out of that tree that very day. He received Jesus joyfully. He welcomed him into his own house. And his life and his eternity are forever changed. Will you? This is very personal. A very personal moment. Because God's call, the seeking of the Lord Jesus requires a response. 
and you will respond. Maybe some of you will respond saying, well, not today, not today. I need to know more. Not today, I've got lots of time. Not today, I still need to size it up. It, it could be very costly, it will be, but it won't cost you near as much as it costs the Lord Jesus to seek you and save you. But it will cost your soul if you die without Christ. If we could look with the telescope of time into eternity, and we could have a little chat with Zacchaeus and the rich man, the rich man whose life was interrupted, his life of pursuit of everything but God. If we could look through the telescope of time and into eternity, and ask them, what about your life? What advice would you have? I'm sure I, it would, it's doubtless that the rich man would say, listen, don't follow me, but learn from my example. I've left it all for 2,000 years nearly. And the God I lived without I'm still without, I'm lost, and there's no remedy. Zacchaeus, is there anybody that identifies with him? Oh, he would tell us, oh, my life was changed. My life was changed. Jesus came to my house, and I received him, and I enjoyed my life, and I'm still enjoying my Savior, the Lord Jesus. The word, Romans chapter 10 and verse 8 says, The word is near to you, even in your heart and in your mouth. That is the word of faith that we preach, faith in the Lord Jesus, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. This is what God's prom God promises. You will be saved. The resting of your eternal well-being on the reliable work and person of the Lord Jesus himself. For with the heart... Man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, identified publicly with sinners when he was nailed to the cross, and beside two sinners, took the penalty of sin, of your sin and mine, on himself publicly identified with humanity, confessed us. Now will you confess him? That you embrace him. You'll receive him as your savior and will identify with him gladly, joyfully, and he'll receive you. May you do so. Remember those words. Look at those words in Romans chapter 10. It was as a boy of 10 years old that as I read those scriptures, I understood it's not just knowing it's true. It's placing the responsibility on God to save me because Christ died in my place and rose again. And he'll do the same for you this day. Is salvation come to this house? May it be so as we pray. Father, we are thankful that the word of God is clear to us, that it is faithful, 
even in giving us this picture of, of the promoting of fruitfulness in our lives this year, even by difficult experiences. And yet this year is a year of fruit seeking. And as we think of this night, that there is, there are those who, who are departing, departing life into eternity, their souls being required, and they're not saved. May there not be even one in our listening audience today who will miss their opportunity, miss the passing Savior, and not be like a Zacchaeus who said, yes, I'm going to receive him this day. And the Lord Jesus received him. And he received the Lord Jesus. His life was changed. His eternity changed. And we pray that that might be the case with many this very night as they look to the cross. And as they look at the promise of the word of God and recognize from the heart. And with their whole being, they rest on Christ. Jesus died for me. Christ died in the place of the ungodly. May it be so, as we pray with thankfulness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. There's a song. I, I just want to read a little bit of it as I bring my time to an end. Is there a heart that is waiting? Longing for pardon today. Today. Jesus, hear the glad message proclaiming Jesus is passing this way. He's passing this way today. And I trust you will embrace the Savior today, this day of opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus joyfully. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Tom. Um, thanks again for that message. And we are um, very grateful to see all of you here uh, tonight with us again. Um, and just a reminder that we will be back here tomorrow, same Zoom link uh, at 7 p.m. Newfoundland time, preaching the Lord Jesus Christ um, and how you can come to know the, your forgiveness of your sins and also um, the one who loved you and gave himself for you uh, 2,000 years ago. And so we're Hoping to see you back here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, Newfoundland time. Uh, and just a couple uh, announcements uh, before we close out the meeting. Uh, we will be displaying the contact information of uh, our brother Tom and also our brother Peter on the screen. And so if you have any questions around the message and about the, um, about the Lord Jesus Christ, please feel free to reach out to them. Um, it's on the screen right now. Um, your text and your email information is there. And if, if you have any questions around the gospel meetings, uh, please uh, send us an email as well at info at stjohnsgospelhall.com. And so we'll be back here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Newfoundland time and every single uh, day until the November the 15th, except on a Saturday. Um, what we'll do now is we'll be playing a hymn and at the end of the hymn, we'll be closing down this meeting. But if you want to come back for a time of fellowship, please click on the link again and uh, you can come back in and uh, you'll be unmuted at that time and we'll, we can have uh, a time of fellowship together. Uh, thank you one again, once again for uh, coming and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow again at the same time, 7 p.m. Newfoundland time. Thank you.